Well, Coasters, it's uh, it's Bruce here, and, and today I'm in Westport. Feels like 20 degrees, 19 degrees, high overcast, back home, and uh, I'm with Melda McCarthy, uh, MacArthur. Now, she came to my wedding with Jim, so that's how far back we go. And it, it's, uh, Melda, it's just fantastic to see you, and what a great opportunity to sit down and have a chat about, you know, where you've been in the last, how old are you now? I'll be 85 in June. 85? So in what June, year were you June, born? 36. 1936? Gosh, you're in, you're in great condition. How do you do that? It's good life. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> it makes a difference, doesn't it? Whereabouts were you born? I was born up at my nana's in um, Stafford Street. She had a maternity home up there. It was still standing. In Nana Hennessy. Stafford Street in Westport. In Westport, yeah. Yeah, by the O'Connor home. The oh, okay. House is still there. Yeah. And was that a was that a maternity ward? Yeah. Yeah, she had two rooms and I think she maybe took two or three patients at a time. I don't know. Yeah. And who were your mum and dad? Mum was a Hennessy, May Hennessy, and Dad was Claude Walsh. Wow. Well, yeah. that's uh from Oxnums. Yeah, of course. The Walsh family. Yeah, no. I, I look, I knew them all, Billy and Claude and uh, Claudia. And, but look, um, so when uh, when uh, Mum and Dad took you home from the home, yeah, which, whereabouts did you go? Where, where was your Where was your family uh, house? One three eight Romley Street, Westport. Yeah, is it still there? Still there, just off Mill Street. Okay, yeah, still there. One three eight. One three eight. When you were, how many brothers and sisters did you have? Um, four sisters. And two brothers yeah. who were protected species. Protected species. My younger sister always called them because they were absolutely ruined. Right, because they were the and youngest ones. No, because they were the only two boys. Oh, I've got you. Billy and Claudie. Yes. And five girls. Yeah. See. Well, you'd have to be protected. Five oh, girls they, would be that'd be hard work. They were. <laughs> we did it all. We did it all. <laughs> I, I love it. What did when you were growing up as a kid? What did you do as a kid for fun? Oh, oh, we had lots, lots of fun. We we used to walk all walk to school together. Yeah, and the nuns used to call us the Mill Street Gang because there was Demet Street, Wills and Derby Street, and we used to all walk. And she called us the Mill Street Gang. Right. There was no gang. No gang about us, but there and then we just oh played and went swimming up Kennis Creek and Scotts Bridge. Did Did you ever yeah. go to picnics? Were the staff picnics or did, you know remember in the old days they oh, used to St. have St Pat's picnic. St Pat's picnic that, pic that was big. Yeah, when we used to walk down the main street. Yep. All all the bikes decorated up in the greenery and whatnot, and down to the um, racetrack. And, and then they'd take out the women to be there and they'd have the big um, wicker baskets with your lunch and brown paper bags and Father Field would come down the afternoon and have lolly scrambles and yeah. I never met Father Field, but I oh, uh, heard a lot of it. He was a good guy. Nice oh, guy. Yeah, he I, was. You know, yeah, he, he, he ran pretty, the place. Pretty strict, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Well, we, there was 10 in our family, of course, and uh, um, it was, uh, if, I don't know how Mum did it, really. I don't know how your know. mum did it. I know. You know, five and two, seven. I can I remember um, we all put in and bought mum her first fridge. So I was working. Goodness me. We all put in and bought her a first fridge. And that was the first time you'd had a fridge? Yeah. And up till then, what happened up till then? We had a big safe. Right. Which they called, well, which put, we had a big one out. And um, it sort of had fine... Wine, not wine. Yeah, like a, like wine that, on the uh, outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you put your meat and everything in the safe. Yeah, it, it fascinates me today. Like if you if you tried that yeah. today, the the meat would be gone in a day, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'll it'll just go off. Yeah. So when you uh, safe. you pick blackberries, oh, we did we did for the nuns made us go and pick blackberries for the missions, and we used to walk up to Harney's which is a way up 
uh, Nine Mile Road yeah. up to their farm, and we'd all pick blackberries, and they would sell them to roaches. The um, do you remember roaches? The big store on the corner I, opposite I, the Melbourne Hotel. Uh, I, I don't. I remember the Grand Hotel that was opposite the Melbourne. Yeah, well, yeah, it was on the other side. On the other side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're hard quippers. Yes. Are there, and they would buy the blackberries, see? And, and as a fundraiser for the uh, For the, for the nuts, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. What about mushrooms? Yeah. Yeah, bull, is, bull is well known for mushrooms. No. <coughs> no didn't I get into re- those? No, I didn't like mushrooms. Can't what? remember that, yeah. Did uh, did your dad go fishing? No, what? he had his horses. He's just 100% horses? Horses. And gosh, didn't his sons, uh, didn't his sons pick up on that? Yeah. <laughs> Did he ever have a did he ever have a good horse? Oh, he'd say they were all good horses. Yeah. All good horses. Can you remember yeah. any can you yeah, remember I any can, names? I can remember um Sea Pirate. Right. And one time I remember he had a bad leg. And they thought they'd have to scratch him from the races. And I it must have been gallops. And they used to have two trots each day in the gallops and he um he didn't they thought they'd have to scratch him anyway this old um jack lucas remember the lucas i do indeed yeah, yes yeah the maori man well he came along and said with some lily leaves and said put lily leaves on the horse's leg and the swelling went down and it ended up at um I think it won two races one day and won the next day. And someone said it Walsh has ever say their horse has got a bad leg, back it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then big Nell Duncan. Remember Nell Duncan? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. Well, she came up, sneaked up one time and left a whole bunch of lily leaves on the brander, just letting them know that they... They were pure of everything. They're, they're, yeah. they're obviously, obviously yeah. quite brilliant. Yeah. How did um, where did the where did Oxnams come from? There was it was it Murchison or from was Murchison, it Murchison? I think. Right. Yeah. And Dad, I think Dad worked for them from when he was a boy. Yeah. Until he took over, and then when he finished, Billy and Claudie took over. Yeah, I worked next door to Claudia for years. Connors and Blackmores. Yeah, I was. I right. worked. He was just such a nice guy. He was. He was a good guy. Yeah, nice guy. You know, I was in. I was in the Charleston Hotel with Claude. This is a story I tell often to people. We were out there, and we we were going shooting, and Claudia was out there with some of his mates, and and they're having a beer, and Mel Sheldon pulled out. Claudia said, "I'll have one of the. I'll have a pie." So anyway, Claudia, uh, this. Mel Sheldon brings these two pies out for one, for the guy next to him, and, and for and for um, Claudia. And he, the guy next to him bites the pie, and it was very, very hard. And we were just sitting there having a beer. And he pulled the top off, and it was full of maggots. Well, he took off out the door like you wouldn't believe. Claudia's sitting there, and he looks at his pie, and he pulled the top off, put it back on, carried on eating it. He was, he was a mate. We were sitting there going, oh, this doesn't feel very good. <laughs> And of course, the the Oxnam uh, the, the the Oxnam's meats were um, a big part of Buller for a long, long well, time, they weren't were, they? Yeah, they were. Long time. Yeah. Then the supermarkets came along, yeah. and things kind of changed. Yeah, that's right. Now tell me, where did you uh, where did you go to school? Where did you go to primary school? Um, went to St Joseph's and St Canice's, yeah. and then went to St Mary's High School when went through there. Did you go to, in Hokitika? No. In, Saint, oh, St. Mary's here? Yeah. All right. So you started off in St. Joseph's? Yeah. Then and that Saint was the Canises, primary school, St. Yeah. Canice's, and then, and then St. Mary's. Yeah. It was a big, uh, there, was a, there was a massive Catholic community here, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, there was, yeah. A really big community. Yeah. Do you remember any of the teachers at, at primary school? Can you remember them? Yeah, I can remember <coughs> most of them. I think um, one was... Sister Adelma and I think in primary school, and she was an ex Westport girl. Right. And she was she was lovely. We had Sister Joke and Sister Dolores, and then we moved up to Saint Canice's, and we had Sister Mary Frances, who was well known. Um, Sister Mary Claude, 
read my own head many times. <laughs> <laughs> and Sister Gonzaga, I think it was. And then we went to St. Mary's, and of course, they had nuns there too. Yeah. And of course, that's all gone. Oh, and then. And so, in secondary school, what what, uh, what subjects do, were you keen on? Oh, well. Was there any of them? Yeah, I always liked English and history. And it was only. There was. They only took. I think there was shorthand typing. We did that. And there was sort of. Professionals, I don't know what they did, but they were the top class. Yeah, yeah. Most and top. so, what happened when? Uh, what was your first job? Ah, oh, I went and worked at Burt Chamberlain's the Taylors. And whereabouts was that in Westport? Get down by um, where next it was next door to Stoles, and there was Lenbury Plummer. Um, so which end of town was that at? Um, just down past Property Brokers. Oh, yep, I know where yeah. it is. Just yeah. down there by Renal Shoe Store. Yes, and, and, what, did, store. and what, yeah. did you, what did yeah. you do there? Oh, I did my apprenticeship as a um, coat hand there. Everything was by hand. Yes. And I was there until 21 and then I went up to Hamilton nursing to my nursing training up there. And was Hamilton good for you? Yeah. You enjoyed it? it? The, yeah, it was different. Yeah. And so you'd still, uh, do you still keep in contact with any of the ones that you went early nursing with? Are they still around? Um, well, a lot of them are dead. Um, up until the last couple of years, I kept in Touch. One was in Australia and one was in Rotorua, and she has since died. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but, so I've only been back once. And so I was up there from 57, 58, and come back at the end of 59. And what brought, what brought you back to Westport? Oh, I wanted to come back for a while and then sort of met up with Jim again. And, and you'd met uh, you'd met Jim before? Oh, before I went, yeah, yeah, and then I sort of fizzled out. These, these things happen. Oh yeah. These things. Well, yeah. <laughs> and then um, ended up uh, work, working at Old Calvary with the Workmen's Clubbers. Yes. Um, and got married in sixty one. Had John sixty two. Grant sixty three. Then Lee, 66, and then Jill, 75. Gosh, that was a big gap. Yeah, I know. That was a big gap. Yeah. Well, I was back at work by then. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you, back was, at work. you were still working at, uh, at the, the hospital, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. What, what, what role did you end up with there? Oh, I ended up at, um, well, when I finished, I was at, I'd gone from, Three carpenters, one in Queen Street, yeah. one in Derby Street, and then the end of Foot Ward. And then they decided in '96 they were cutting staff, so they only wanted there was five of us, five, and um, they were cutting it to two. You have seen... So two of us finished completely. One went to Foot Ward, and two of us finished. Yeah. The change is inevitable, but it's really difficult, isn't it? Oh. You know, it... it, it uh, Patients it, getting short-changed all the way along. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think that kind of feels how it is now, too. Oh. It's, yeah. Yeah. So... Where we worked, it was, you know, it, it was lovely. Good, as Jim used to say, good conditions and you like your work. And I'm in an old, dirty old mine. Yep. You know. Yeah. But um, but no, they they were good. They were good days and good good crew that you worked with, you know. So tell me, uh, can you remember your first date with uh, Jim? God, I think I met him at the Birchfield dance. In Dances, the, I think. Yeah. In the hall there. Eh? Yeah, out there. I mean, did you uh, did you know straight away he was the man? Oh no, not really. He just just yeah, hung around. Yeah. And, and how did it, uh, how did he end up capturing you? Or did you capture him? Oh, I don't know. 
I suppose you drift into these things. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and yeah. Jim was a, what was Jim? What did he do? Well, he was in the mine and um, he was he was just a miner and then he did his um, deputy's ticket and his underviewer's ticket. Yeah. And um, he worked in Millerton. He loved Millerton. But he could see the writing on the wall with the fire and then it closed. But he'd moved to Stockton then. So was he underground? Yes, he was underground. underground. Yeah. And then he went to Deniston. And he was in Deniston when they laid off all the men. Yeah. It's um, it's part of our history, isn't it? Oh, I know. And we're only... Uh, we're pawns in a in a very big game when yeah. it, when downturns occur. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, what about uh, Jim was a good tennis player. Obviously, I I had a lot to do with him on the oh, court. Yeah, he was a rugby player. And what he had played the, all sport. What was it? What was he like at rugby? Oh, he was pretty. He was pretty good. He wasn't a selfish player. No, he was. He was. A, he was a good player. He probably the, say he was a great player. Yeah. Well, he's in <laughs> he's in the bulletin. Oh yeah, and, and he's in the West team. in the West Coast he, team. I think he just turned seventeen. I think he said when he got first picked in the bullet team. Yeah, and I remember a guy telling me, yeah, and he marked an All Black. He said, and it really knocked him around. He was too young. Oh, early on, I yeah. guess at seventeen. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. You yeah. haven't got the and um, every Queen's birthday, I think they used to play Canterbury, and of course they always had. A lot of all blacks in their team still like they have. Yeah. And um well, it should be hard think, work. And I think it was Johnny Hotop. I remember coming one time and he said, God, I get sick of looking at your face across the, <laughs> the room, <laughs> across the paddock. But um but no, sport he, he was well, sport mad. He was. No, yeah. yeah. Uh, he, he was uh he's a he's a wonderful tennis player. And and you know, there's, there's exciting tennis players, and he wasn't one of those. No. He just kept it in the back. And they go back and back and back. And in the end, you really just you fall over. Dash. You just, <laughs> you know, and you have to have to throw the towel in. He was great. Yeah. It, it, uh, and so what happened uh, after he retired? Well. Did you both he, retire together, basically, did you? No, no, I was still working. It was 87 he finished, I finished the end of 96. Oh, okay, so there's a bit of yeah. a gap there. Yeah. Yep. And he played golf for a while. Did he like golf? Yeah, he liked golf. Yeah? Yeah. And, um, and he used to go fishing a lot, go fishing. I think he had the first um, con ticket. Wow. That came in, yeah, I had to, had to get it. So where were you and, living then, Melda? Um, you were out? We are in here. Oh, yeah, back. We were in here then. Right. And um, he, used, he used to go fishing a lot. He'd say, oh, I'm, I'll, I'm up to, um, out to the pines, you know, the beach yep. out there. Yep. I'm out there. And he'd come home and he'd been out at Makanu. And I used to say to him, <laughs> what if something happens to you? Well, someone would find me. Yeah. You know. <laughs> oh, no, well, not in those days either. And did he catch? Did he catch a lot of fish? Was he good? Not as much as what he thought he would have. <laughs> I can remember him catching a small gurnet on the contiki. Yeah. It was, uh, no, one of these. He got the contiki, and then he had to get. We had a trailer, so then he had to get him. A motorbike thing to tow the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> you, then, name, you name it, he had it. And then he had to get a winch to pull the line in, I suppose. And I know we've all been there. Yeah, and yeah. It sounds like uh, he, it sounds like he's caught a lot more fish than I have. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you uh, have you done uh, during your married life? How long were you married for? I, I think guess. it was. 48 years when he died. Yeah. 48? Yeah. Yeah, Jenny and I are just uh, coming up 48. Oh, yeah. It was 74 and uh, you, you were there and... Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Good God, yes. Time flies, doesn't it? Doesn't it? 
Have you have you been uh, well travelled? Have you over the years? Have you yeah. gone to other places? Yeah. Where have you been? I've been to um, I go to Australia quite a bit. Yeah. Because my younger sister lives in Adelaide. Go there. Um, been to England. Wow. Yeah, because my youngest daughter was over there, and I went over with two friends, and. Um, did Ireland, Scotland, and then Italy, and all around there, Europe, yeah. Jim was still alive there, but he wouldn't go. Oh, so you so you went, with, you went with some friends? Yeah, I went with two friends from here, and they would, and he wouldn't go. Oh, well, he, that's how it goes. Yeah. yeah. What, and what was it like? What was going through Italy? I've never been to England or... Oh, England was, was surprised, you know, you think it's was a dirt place, but we had sunshine all the way till we got to Ireland. Yeah. And it was just like coming home. It was rain. <laughs> we were damp. <laughs> I love but it. it. Was, but it was lovely. It was, yeah, really lovely because my grandparents were all Irish. And um, and did Scotland, loved Glasgow. Italy was just mind-blowing. In what way? Oh, I don't know. The ages of the buildings. Um, Pompeii, I thought, was just fantastic. It, really, the, the ruins. And I could remember reading about it when I was at school. And it was, you could just imagine the old big wheel carts going, you know, in. Yeah, it was and really is it all pre is it all preserved? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And the cobblestones, you know, they're about that that wide and um, uneven, and you could just about see the people covered in all the lava and what you know in your imagination. It was just it really, I thought, it was fantastic. Did you go to France? No, I didn't go to France. Missed France. Greece. Yeah. No, and then three years ago, I went to, oh, it was five, five years ago, I went to Vegas. Do you realise you would have been 80 <laughs> five years ago? I had my 79th birthday swimming in Hawaii. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're, yeah. you're amazing. I had a nephew um, who was living in Canada and he was getting married and they um, got married in Vegas. So my niece, <coughs> Maureen Haightley, and I, we flew from here to Vegas and met up with my sister and her husband from Adelaide and um, went to the wedding. And it's just an eye-opener. Vegas is just amazing. <laughs> was, it, was it fun? It was. Well, we, there was probably about five couples from Adelaide there. So um, we just went everywhere together and had a look. And just eyes were sticking out on stalks. It, what, it, and I can remember one morning we were walking home. <clears throat> it must have been from a hen, the hen party or something. And it must have been about or two o'clock in the morning. But there was more people on the street than what you'd see in Christchurch at peak time. And so you were 79 out partying? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's okay. coast. It's that yeah. coast breeding, isn't it? And then we went to Canada. Right. And Vancouver. What was and, Vancouver like? Oh, wonderful. I thought it was beautiful. And we went to Vancouver Island. I had a cousin there, Ronnie Hartle, from down... The coast. I was going to say, he's down my, that family's down my way. Yeah. yeah. Um, his father, Claude, was my first cousin. Right. And we met up with him and Kathy, his wife, in Vancouver Island. That was just beautiful. What's Vancouver, Vancouver Island, Island like? What, what's, beautiful. What do they do there? It's a it's a park, isn't it? Or a national There's, park? Or? Yeah, they're... Um, Forestry yeah. is where you see all the big logs 
you know, rolling down the river and that. Oh, did you see that? Yes, see that. And um, a lot a lot of bays, but it's just such a pretty place, Vancouver Island. And the planes, the little we I'd say, two-seater planes, it's just like taxis. They're coming in and out all the time and just landing and, yeah, you, you didn't take any notice after a while because there was just so many. So in Vancouver itself, yeah, what Vancouver, was it like? Lovely, yeah. And I used to think, why do all Canadians come to New Zealand? Because it's just a bigger version of New Zealand. Did it know? feel safe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've walked around by yourself, yeah. So you 80 First odds didn't saw... cause any trouble over there, did you? <laughs> no. no. Um, we did all the, um, the big tree walks um, in Capilano and... Um, Oh, yeah, did all the touristy things. Did you go to a casino? Well, we were a, in sort of a, a casino where we stayed in Vegas. Um, and we thought, well, none of us played the machines. Yeah. But the night before, we thought, well, we'll have to have a go. But I had to go with someone because I'd never played the machine. Yeah. And I think she put in fifty dollars, and I put in twenty. I think she got a hundred out. I lost mine. <laughs> <laughs> but the worst part was, I'd taken my my purse, <clears throat> my purse out, my little wallet out, and I'd put it on a shelf. I never even told the kids this, and um, put the money in. And the next morning, I couldn't find my wallet. Turned the suitcase upside down, inside out, couldn't find it. So Maureen said, I'll go down to the lost property. So she went down, she came back with a little security guard about this high, and she picked me up and took me down, and it had been handed in to the lost property, and there hadn't been a thing taken out of it. Oh, that's what a great story. And I said, I had to sign in, and even loose change that was in it. We're still there. Yeah, there was my pension card and all, in it, you know, and I said, look, did they leave their name and address? She said, no, they didn't. We don't know who handed it in. Oh, that's just amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you'd be, yeah. Hard, oh. To be hard to be beating, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. So you've been to Canada, America, yeah. Ireland, Scotland. Wales? Did you go to Wales? Yes. In England? Yeah. Where anywhere else? Oh, Hawaii, of course. Hawaii. Yeah. What was Hawaii like? Um, I think we were getting a bit tired by then. Oh, we was that on the way home? On the way home. We had I think it was five days there. It was hot. And that was we left Hawaii to come home and it was twenty four degrees. I think it was at midnight we were flying out. Yeah. And got to Christchurch to four degrees. Oh, that <laughs> get you going. Winter. Yeah. So, Melda, if if you if you thought about um, a place that you've been to where you went, wow, I could live here. What where would it be? Hmm. Don't know. Maybe Canada. It feel what yeah. was that? Did, did yeah. it feel? I still think he is the best. Yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, on a good day, where would you want to be? Yeah. Now you've got uh, three children. Four. Four children. Sorry. Two what, boys. So what do they do? I look. I met John <coughs> years, years ago. I met John. Yeah. John's in Perth. Right. And he's been there for. 30, coming up 35 years. And how, how many kids has John got? He's got two boys. Oh, so a couple of, couple of grandsons there. Yeah, um, Connor's 24 and he's in Melbourne and needs 17. He's last year boarding school. Oh, we could be we could be talking great-grandchildren at some oh, stage. God, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> and then Grant is, um, he's just turned 48. 
from Wednesday, yeah. and he works for Courier Post in Christchurch. Right. Started off at the post office at Granity on the exchange, and then moved into town, and then got offered the job over there, so he went over there, and he lives in Spray, and he's got two lovely kids. Was he there in the earthquakes? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Did he come through it all right? Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And he's got two, and the two girls are both teachers. Over there, Jill teaches at St. Bede's, and Lee is principal at Poonhay Primary. Wow. Oh, haven't they done well? Do they have? They're, yeah, they're, they're so good. Yeah, it's proud of them. Yeah, tell me, you know, when you were growing up, were things a lot different to what they are for kids today? And if, and if they're different, how are they different? Oh. Well, oh, times have just changed so much. We never had half the stuff that the kids have got today. It's a lot simpler, but wasn't it? Everybody else was in the same boat. Yeah, it was. A, it was a lot simpler. Yeah, and so even at Nokawa, the kids we well living where we lived, and the kids spent most of the time over in the paddock or the domain where it was you could just look out the window and see that they were there and they just congregated there and none of them got into any bother isn't that great yeah did you did you ever meet um brumble mum oh yeah he was our neighbor oh he was was yeah, he really he was the only one that had the phone on around there <laughs> yeah now for those those coasters yeah. i mean you'll all know that brumble yeah. mum of course was a was an all black Famous, a yeah. famous yeah. buller person, wasn't he? Yeah. What was yeah. he like? Big fella? Yeah. Big and gruff. Yep. Good guy. Good guy. Yeah. Yeah, they're the only one that had the phone on. Well, that's... So if anyone wanted us and needed me for work, they'd ring mums. And then we got the phone on. And it'd be like a big step forward, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, see, so you didn't have phones in those days. When when did you when did you first get a phone at home? Were the kids did you have kids or were you just you and Jim or? No, I was back working. Before you got a phone. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was back working. Um, Seventy two. No, I might have been about seventy three, seventy four that we got the phone on. See, that's not long ago, really, is it? 74, you were... Well, that's yeah. 48 years ago. That's it. That's, yeah. That was that's yeah. the one. And there's lots of things that have changed, haven't there? What was your first car? What did you, what did you have for a first car? Oh. Can you remember, were you a car person yeah. or was it... Well, I never had a car. I had a bike. Right. Um. Jim had a little A35. Oh, yes, the bubble a, one. Yeah. Oh, weren't they awesome? A35. Then he got a Zephyr. A Zephyr when we got married. And then I think... Did we get a Datsun? It would have to be one of the first Datsuns. Datsun, yeah. Would have been a Bluebird or one of those. Yeah, it was a Bluebird. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was a Bluebird. And um, then I, th I think we learned that you don't go off the mainstream ones. It's hard because there's yeah. hardly any Japanese cars. Yeah, the first ones. Around. Yeah, first ones were a bit rough. A bit, yeah. bit rough, weren't they? Yeah. yeah, they were sort of. Uh, yeah. So when when you look at uh, you know you've got a lovely home here in, in Westport. You're not far from the floating basin. You've got lots no. of places you can walk. Um, I, I notice there's a lot of walking tracks now. Being oh, developed, and what they look fantastic. One. Yeah, there's one just down the end of the street. Have you been on that? Yeah, I used to do it every day in the lockdown. Yes. Yeah. Um. Probably taking maybe the big long one, maybe three quarters of an hour. Not long. You just walk across. There's a bridge right across the lagoon. Yes. And it's a great walk. You take a shorter one, which takes you up the um, side of. The Buller River, and then it meets up with the other one, and you can go right right around and come back out 
Yeah, and, that's great. And there's a new one being developed, uh, yeah. the Kawatiri Trail, I yeah. think it is. Yeah, if you I think it, you start down the end of the Buller Bridge. Yes. This side, and you go across the Buller Bridge. I saw the underpass here. Yeah. On the other side of the bridge. Yeah, and you um, take you out to Carter's. Oh, it's right along, great yeah. for community health, isn't it? Yeah. You know, the kids are yeah. out there biking and mums and dads are yeah. biking. Yeah, I haven't done that one. How, how do you think uh, the coast's going? I mean, we, we know that we have we our ups and downs. We industry. We do. We've lost, lost a generation of young people. They've all had to go away for jobs. Probably lucky that we're at the ages that we are. Because there's nothing much for the young, you know, if Bathurst closed up, that would be really bad. Well, it's probably not looking too good. No, no. You know, it's probably not looking too good. They're, they're making it quite, oh, making it quite yeah. hard. And there's a yeah. look. There's a there's a move out there to uh, to have the coast as a a playground for tourists. Tourists. And there's no tourists. Yeah. They put all their eggs in one basket. What a mistake that and was. they're paying, paying for it. Yeah. So where do you think, I mean, Jenny and I quite often come to Westbrook because it's hometown, yeah. and uh, I've got to say, it feels good in town. It just... Yeah, and, if, the, and it looks good. Yeah. But if there was just something that could keep the young ones here. Well, I guess uh, some form of transition away from mining is going to have to happen because uh, under the current uh, well, regime under yeah. the current regime and the, the reality is that the people of New Zealand elected them as a majority like we've never seen before so that I don't necessarily agree with it but I uh, that's democracy isn't it yeah yeah and um, no I'm a bit disappointed because I really thought You'd be right, but I think I think all coasters, to a degree, are conservationists. Yeah. But they also can see the reality there's got to be work. Whereas I think the Greens have got a bit too much input. That, that's certainly how it feels at the present time. Mm. And, and, and they're, uh, not, they're, not, they're not worried about it. The local people. And, and without jobs, you actually don't have a community and you actually can't look after the environment. No. Because, because it'll just, it's just, it's a, it's a funny old world, funny old world. Oh. Well, so, look, look what's down your way. Oh, yeah, we're, we're in deep trouble down yeah. south. Gosh, yeah, we really that's are. That's sad. Yeah. And, and uh, doing the job I do as mayor, um, I, I often get to talk to families who are in tears. Mm. in Fox and Friends. They've been working, paying all their bills for 30, 40 years, built up a substantial asset base, um, taken on a bit of debt to grow, and then all of a sudden, overnight, it's wiped out, and no one cares. It's, you know, they, we all care. And, and That's right. But, um, but there's, you know, there's just no, there's no focus on them. No, and... And you can't blame the young ones for going, but um, it's families that have got their base there. Yep. Got their houses, and yeah, it's it's very sad. And of course, we've we've been through it before. I mean, the mining sector in Buller, mm. we've been through the solid energy collapse. Yeah. Give us all yeah. a hiding, didn't it? That was exactly. That was a real hiding, and. And when they closed native logging down in 88, 89, that gave us a hiding. Yeah. Not necessarily the wrong thing to do. However, the way it was done just created so much. And, and towns like uh, Harry Harry and Wataraa, they've never recovered. No. That's 30, 38 years ago. That's years ago. Never recovered. So if you were um, if you were sitting in uh, Jacinda's seat now, what would you, you're a wise woman. You've been around 85 years. What would you do? job for quids. <laughs> It'd be difficult, wouldn't it? I wouldn't have it for quids. I think I got a lot more I've had a lot of time for Jacinda. And I don't like the way that 
a lot of the radio hosts just put her down so much. Just listen to talk back. Yeah. And just, I just think, if she was a man, would they say those things about her? I feel it's because she's a woman that they've put her down. Yep. Yeah, and it's it, it's a real it's a real challenge. But talkback radio, generally, there's a lot of whinges on there, aren't there? Oh, you yeah. Know, all the yeah. whinge. I don't listen yeah. to it myself, but because uh, it it would depress me. Yeah, you know, I know. You you get to the end of the day and think, geez, it's not worth living. What are we doing? <laughs> and so, what's what's Westport like as a place to retire? Do you get supported? Um, I think it's a good place to retire, but I wouldn't tell people to come here because you've got to take in the medical situation. Yep. You're getting a new hospital, aren't you? One day? Yeah, I think I'll be long gone by then. Oh, no, you've got, look, you've got another 15 in you at least. No, um, no, um, well, we're, we're only getting locums all the time, and they might come for a month, yeah. they might come for a fortnight. We haven't got any continuity with doctors, not like you used to have. I remember Dr. Foot and all the others there. There's the one. Yeah. <laughs> he was a good doctor. He was a good doctor. Good doctor. You didn't didn't go to him unless you were sick, but he was a damn good doctor. So so how how can we improve that? Because that's the key looking forward. We've got to we've we've got to say the elderly are a really important part of our economy now. And um, one day I'll be there myself and probably not too far away. Um how do we make it better for them to attract them so they feel safe, so they've got good medical services? How are we going to do that? I don't, I don't know, Bruce. I'd say that possibly a lot would be, if they were married, I'd say their wives might say, I'm not going there. Yep. I can remember um, when Jim was at Davidson House, he was, had to go to one of the doctors and one of the young doctors said, I'd love to have come to Westport, but my wife wouldn't come. See? And then you get the likes of, say, like Dr. Cox, who came to Granity and stayed 15 years. Become a big part of the community, yes. didn't they? Yeah. 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 No, it's a bit hard to tell, isn't it? It yeah, really is. But... Yeah. But, and see, we've lost a lot of our services at the hospital. Yeah. We've lost our, well, they come up from Greymouth three days a week. But we had our own technicians and that here before that. Yeah, and now they're gone. And when they finished in Coast Health Care, knew 12 months ahead they were going, but never did anything about calling for applications. And see, so they're just slowly eroding all our services. The helicopter comes in most days. Yep. And then they're down there and they might get discharged late and they've got no way of getting back up. Back home. Yeah, the there's all those little things that There's count. clearly a lot of improvements that can be made, and I think that, yeah. you know, I'm sure they're aware of them. We, we yeah, kind but of, do they want to know about it? Well, we, I think the philosophy now is you, you you put them in a plane and fly them somewhere else, pack them and ship them. Yeah. Um, but, of course, we've all got our families here. We've got our support here. We've got our cat at home or our dog at home. We've got, I mean, we're people. Well, not long ago, there was an article in the paper about this man got discharged from Christchurch Hospital. He was a diabetic. He was not well at all. And they put him on the bus. Sent him home. And sent him home on the shuttle. 
his wife was with him and but she had to get the driver to help to get him off at Calvert and he wanted to go to the toilet. Well, that's that's not good. It's not not how it's meant to be, is it? No. Well, Melda, um, we come to the end of this uh, this interview, and and I want to thank you for allowing me to sit down with you and catch up again after all these years, and. Uh, uh, this this will be a series of five interviews that will show on the Coasters Club. It'll appear on our YouTube channel and uh, a copy will be sent to the Westport uh, Museum. So it'll be on a memory stick so that uh, in years to come, your family will be able to access a discussion. I can, I can tell the family and, and Coasters, this lady is in fantastic condition. She's 85 years old. Not huge. In, well, in a few days. In a few months. In a few months. You haven't forgotten one word, one name, or one date. How do you do it? It's amazing. Oh, man. Well, yeah. But look, good once living. Good living. And, and once again, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Bruce.